Hi, my name is Antoine from Team Solomit, and this is my low class big play for Najin vs CG in the LCK. In the pick ban phase this game, Najin decides to ban Ryze early and Shin. So for Shin, Shin is a really good flex pick, especially for purple side because you can play both top and support. Having that flex pick just allows CJ to like last pick top lane all support and that just gives them a counter opportunity so they just rather deny that pick. So normally it's purple side banning Ryze but in this case it's actually blue side banning Ryze so either that's because Najin just doesn't want to play Ryze, they don't think their top lane is good enough to play it, or he isn't the best player on Ryze whereas maybe Shy is a really good Ryze player. Then you see on CJ side they ban Kalista because Kalista is still a really strong pick on 5.12. They also ban Gregus and Illin and they ban Gregus and Illin probably because they think Gregus, Illin and Rexa are the top 3 right now. So they want to make sure that when they trade they want to early rotate Rex eyes so deny jungle picks for watch because they most likely think watch is a really strong jungler. And Najin also banned TF and TF is a really good pick for I think both teams because like TF has their pressure around 6 because of his global ultimate. Most regions are playing TF a lot right now because if you have really good coordination with your team you can make plays and you can snowball the entire game through his ultimates and maybe Najin's mid lane doesn't play TF at all that they think Coco is just a really good TF player. Najin first pick Saber which is obviously a really really good first pick because Saber right now in this meta is really really strong. She is definitely first pick worthy. And then CG gets Rumble and Rek'Sai. So Rek'Sai, that was pretty obvious because they banned two junglers against Watch. But they pick Rumble first rotation because TF is banned. TF is a mid laner that if you pick Rumble and they have TF, you're not gonna have a fun time because they normally, how every single team sets it up is, if you pick Rumble, then you can pick a really strong uh, early game top laner with split push and then you can pick TF mid. And what happens is at 6 TF will continuously gank top and rumble with die airsing on time because they have CC and damage and that's like you can't even prevent that you just die so CG takes this map moon and say okay they ban TF so we can play rumble here. Najin picks Victor second rotation. I don't know about this pick because I feel like they should wait another rotation before picking mid laner mainly because when you pick mid lane early then CJ can counter pick mid lane but they don't have to use the last pick to counter mid lane so therefore they could also get counter pick on another lane. It could be because uh, Najin feels Victor is just the strongest pick here and they think they're gonna play Victor regardless. Later on Najin picks Lee Sin which kind of makes sense because they pick Lee Sin and Marco in the same rotation and that means they want to heavy focus on top lane and then want to make sure that Rumble falls behind and then they want to use their pressure with Maokai TP flanks and any engage with Sivir to snowball the game out of control. I think it's a quite good strategy going into the game but the thing is CJ last picks Braum and Braum is really good against hard engage so what happens is CJ has a really defensive team fighting composition as Najin has a really aggressive team fighting composition and what that comes down to is uh, if Najin can get the picks with their um, engage comp then they're gonna win the team fights but if CJ can rely on them getting out of the first engage and then re-engaging then CJ would come out ahead. So going into the fight, both R Rumble and Asir both just finished Abyssal Scepter, which means they have a really huge power spike because Najin is mainly heavy AP damage. And also both Sivir and Graves just finished Infinity Edge, so they both have the same power spike. For junglers, it's a bit tilted to watch Rexa because Rex is better in team fights and later on in the game and he also has more items. It's not a huge difference, but it's like 400 health or something. Marco has, he has Rider's Glory, that means he has a really good way of engaging. So any flash engages on Graves, and then like instantly afterwards they TP both Marco and Rumble, and then Graves somehow gets out of the engage, and therefore it's really bad for Najin. But uh, it's really bad for Najin because they rely on getting that pick off in the start of the fight. So what happens is that both Graves and Rexa escapes with a sliver of health, and then Asir comes from the back line and kills Lee Sin instantly and then he goes on to the other three and the thing with the comps is that Najin really relies on getting those early picks and because the fight is more like it's more like it's a really long fight and therefore both Asir and Rom gets a lot of damage on them that means that CJ wins the team fight. So going into the team fight Asir just finished death cap which is a huge power spike and for Victor it just means finished watch stuff. For the rest of the players it's kinda even in terms of items, but right now I feel like CG has a slight lead because SG has the death cap. 
So here Maokai TPs on a flank and Silver instantly ulties to follow up and Maokai goes on Grace, which is really really good, they get the pick off and Lee Sin gets the Q and Graves. But here what happens is that Lee Sin ults his Graves back into the back line, but they actually doesn't they don't kill Graves, which is really really bad because as I said before, CJ, the longer team fights the better for them. And because the is untouched, what happens is that Sir is killing their their entire team so much faster than they are killing CJ. And therefore, CJ just comes out hugely ahead. And also because Rumble hits a really, really nice equalizer on top of two or three people, they get kill instantly. Because Najin tunnels so hard on Graves and they didn't actually get the kill, CJ will win regardless of what happens. Because what happens in Najin's jump is that if you don't get a pick off, you're going to lose the extended team fight. So what Najin could have done better is, first of all, they tunnel vision way too much in Graves. What could have happened was, like, they didn't kick Graves back into the back line. But what he could have done was get the kick on Asir, and that would exploit him way higher than it would exploit Graves because Graves has two escapes. He has both the E and the Flash and the Heal, whereas Asir only has the Cleanse and the Flash. So Graves is also more tanky than Asir. So if they got that kick on Asir, they'd most likely won the team fight. But because they tunnel vision way too hard on Graves and let Asir hit their entire backline, they just straight up lost the team fight. So after winning a really huge team fight like that, 4-0, what they get is they get both Buttars. Could potentially have gotten inhib too if the death times were a bit longer, but because it's only 25 minutes in game, they only get the inhib turret because they respawn too fast. But what that means is they have come, they got all the Buttars, which means that now that they can just sit up on top side where Baron is. You can sit up for Baron control and you can make Rumble whenever he gets TP, he can start split pushing butt again and apply pressure that way. And having the 4-0 for this team fight gives a lot a lot of lot of vision because you know where they're gonna be for the next 30 to 1 minute. You know they're gonna push out butt wave, they have to push out butt wave and while they're pushing out butt wave you can always put 5 people on top side of the map and you can get all the vision control you want and if they try to contest the vision control you're gonna fight them for 5v4. So leading up to team fight this year has a huge power spike, he had 5 items and he also got Merc Treads. Having Merc Treads means that anyone he engages on this year, it's less stuns, which means that he will probably be able to survive the initial engage. And Graves has a QSS, which means if any decides to engage in Graves, he can also just QSS and run away. This year also has a cleanse, so it's really hard for Nadine to get to their back line, which means that in every single team fight, from this point on, CG should win regardless of what happens because they can't engage on their backline. So Rexa goes on Victor, but they don't have follow up, and therefore Rexa takes a huge chunk in the start of the fight, which is really, really bad because now he's half filled leading up to the actual fight. And what happens here is that because he's chunk, then Najin feels like they can go in, and they pop several, and then they just go on Asir. What happens is any flash ults Asir, but he has cleanse, and therefore. He is actually not gonna die, and because he can't die, then as I said before, CG always wins the prolonged team fights. Therefore, CG comes out with 1 0. When you kill that jungler, that means that they can pressure Baron. Because they can pressure Baron, then Najin has to actually play because they don't wanna give a free Baron. So now they go in again. What happens is CG knows obviously they're gonna come in, and therefore they set up a trap. The second they come in, they fight again. They get a catch on Maokai because they thought they were already on Baron, and after they get a catch on Maokai, they try to get the engage on to Saber and Victor because they want to make sure that their damage fresh are gone, threats are gone so they can get a free Baron afterwards. They get Saber and therefore they can rotate straight to Baron and at that point CG obviously has a really high win condition. At this fight, 39 minutes in game, they pop several in Red Skull and jump on Braum, and they do this just to get engaged because they really they are 10k behind, so they really want to get a fight. And what happens is that they play the fight pretty well, but the thing that happens is that Graves goes in range of Victor, and Victor gets the E all on Graves, so he's stoned from the entire team fight. Then Asir goes in and uses his combo with all on to two targets, but because he can't kill them without Graves and Graves out this fight, they actually manage to lose the fight because Graves position really poorly. So in this scenario, CG should just have let the waves push in towards their Nexus starts because they both have bot and mid in him. So CG doesn't have to be in like such an engaged heavy position where and any can get to the back line. What they should have done is just slowly wait till one of the Naji members goes down to clean butt wave and mid wave and when they do that then they can start hitting the inhib. So all they had to do would, would be patient and then they would win the game.
So CG starts Baron and therefore Naden decides to engage on them. What happens is CG gets the Baron, but the thing is that any gets the Flash all in both Graves and Asir, which I was talking about before. If they get that really good engage, they might be able to turn the fight. They get to kill Asir because they got the engage on them. So it becomes a two for one situation where both Bot and Top Wave is pushing towards CJ, so they get additional turrets against Najin, which is a huge thing because you get a lot of gold. And then Rumble gets to pick up Annie. The thing is that they are losing turrets, so what happens is Najin actually comes out ahead because they get more gold overall. CJ thinks they got a pick on onto Maokai, but what happens is that Maokai is really tanky and they can't kill Maokai instantly. And then Maokai and Annie turns onto their carries and they kill Asir and Graves instantly. And also get Rumble later on. And because they get those three picks, it's all their damage. Now CJ only has Rex and Braum left and they can't really deal with a, a full roster Najin swords because they have no damage. So what happens is that Najin ends the game off that free pick catch and they somehow managed to win the game. So all this game what happens is that CJ gets a huge early game lead because Nightingale Tunnel Vision is too much on Graves and later on in the game CJ should have won every single fight but because CJ's carries position really poorly they somehow gets picked off and Nightingale comes back in the game and then like the last team fight the factor was that they were, like CJ was playing with Rumble, as CJ Graves, but Braum and Rexel were no near to be found, so they're playing three versus five, and when you don't have your tanks to peel for your carries, they're gonna die instantly. That happens this game where both Rumble, as CJ and Graves die instantly, where both Rex and Braum are in, in the jungle not doing anything, and then they lose the game. Thanks for watching, make sure to check out the rest of my guys on lolclass.com.